The Federal Reserve is the most powerful force in the market. Their decisions touch every part of the financial system and can make or break you. That makes following the Federal Reserve an absolute must for every market practitioner. So whether you're an active day trader like myself or just your average investor, you want to know what the Fed is doing. Luckily for you, my specialty is trading the Treasury futures where we focus primarily on what the Federal Reserve will do. Action triggered by the Fed has been the source of some of my greatest wins, but uh, also some of my greatest losses. So as the market enters a period where the focus on the Fed is greater than ever, this is the perfect time to share with you my knowledge around trading the Federal Reserve. There's a lot to know though, so get comfortable. Hey, I'm Speculator Seth, and welcome to my channel where we experience the front lines of the financial markets together. I am a futures trader that specializes in trading the treasury futures, and you can join me for my live stream every morning at 8.30 Eastern Time. Experience really matters when it comes to following Federal Reserve policy, and there is no better public resource out there on this subject than this channel. I've got more videos coming too, so make sure you like and subscribe for future videos. If you have any questions, I always answer, so leave them in the comments below. For you more experienced traders, I love to hear your stories, so tell me about your favorite Federal Reserve Day memories. I think my favorite was that meeting back in I think May of 2018 where some trader plopped a huge offer on the treasuries and we just followed it for a quick 16 ticks. I don't think anything will ever be as exhilarating as that one trade. So let's get into it and let's start with what the Federal Reserve is. The Federal Reserve is a body designated by the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 to set United States interest rate policy. They can influence the availability of money and credit to support the country's economic goal. Their dual mandate is to support maximum employment and maximum price stability, and they do this with three main tools. The federal funds rate, which is the rate that banks use for overnight lending between each other, reserve requirements that determine how much money banks can actually loan out, and open market operations like the purchase of bonds and quantitative easing programs. At the center of the Federal Reserve is its governing body, the Federal Reserve open market committee. This board consists of 12 members and you need to know who these people are. The first seven are appointed by the president and confirmed by Congress. The remaining slots are filled by the presidents of the 12 Federal Reserve regional banks. So there are regional banks in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Richmond, Atlanta, Chicago, St. Louis, Minneapolis, Kansas City, Dallas, and San Francisco. The New York Fed holds a special spot because it runs the Federal Reserve's market operations, so they always have a spot. The remaining four are then filled on a rotating schedule that changes every year with four alternates. So not Every regional bank president is a voting member that year, but markets still take note of when non-voting members are speaking as they could be voting members in the future. So the members of the committee are changing all the time, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of time on going down the names. Just know that you need to know who these people are. Now, the committee meets eight times a year to make monetary policy decisions, and this meeting is the biggest event in finance, which sets up a regular cycle between meetings where markets digest new information and try to predict what the Fed will do next. So, We'll talk about the meeting itself in a moment, but first I want to talk about the data that we get in between meetings because that's where some of the biggest opportunities lie. The first key source of information that we get in between meetings comes from the FOMC members themselves. Committee members frequently give speeches at various conferences and events that can be parsed for clues about what the Federal Reserve is thinking. Such speeches will usually be listed on your economic calendars, but not always. Kind of depends on how far in advance the speech was scheduled, and sometimes those television appearances can really catch you off guards. When possible, it is helpful to look at where they will be speaking and the subject matter of the event. Depending on the event, they may be more or less likely to talk about actual economic policy 
that could move markets. See, sometimes they're just giving brief opening remarks at a conference where not much discussion on policy is expected, but other times they're speaking at economic forums or conferences on monetary policy, or they're being interviewed on TV where they're much more likely to say something important. You'll also want to look for if there will be audience questions which are much more likely to elicit unexpected information. Of course, how significant their remarks will be also has to do with if the Federal Reserve has a message it wants to get out. Perhaps there was significant economic numbers recently, or there is a debate about the market or about current policy. Talking to the public is one of the most important and powerful tools that the Federal Reserve has. So we always want to be ready when a Fed speaker is scheduled, even if most of the time nothing significant happens. I should also point out at this point that the Federal Reserve has a big symposium every year at the end of August in Jackson Hole. This is often where the Federal Reserve unveils new research or big initiatives. Anyways, these speeches from Federal Reserve speakers are some of the best sources for learning about economics and markets. Plus, you get to learn about the individual members and their unique approaches. So listen and make sure you can get everything out of it that you can. Now, it is important to note that there is a blackout period where Fed members cannot speak to the public. Blackout period begins two Saturdays before the FOMC meeting. So you basically get about a week and a half before the meeting because the meeting usually happens on Wednesday. This has actually tripped markets up quite a bit lately because we got big surprising economic numbers during the blackout period. And that just doesn't give the Federal Reserve the opportunity to comment on the numbers before the meeting. And that means more uncertainty, more eyes on the market. And, you know, it can just get really crazy. Fun times though fun times. <laughs> and that brings me to the next key source of information that we get between Fed meetings, economic reports. Remember that the Fed's dual mandate is maximum employment and price stability. So naturally, economic reports that measure jobs and inflation specifically tend to be more influential. For jobs, we have the weekly jobless claims, which are released every Thursday. And then there's the all-important non-farms jobs report that is released on the first Friday of the month. As a part of that non-farms report, we also get average hourly earnings. Everyone always focuses on the jobs created number, but the hourly earnings number can be just as important because it has to do with inflation. Now on the inflation side, we have the consumer price index and the producer price index reports that are released once a month. We have seen some monster moves out of those reports lately as the Federal Reserve fights inflation. Now for these reports, it's very important to note the difference between the headline inflation number and the core inflation number, which excludes food and energy. Food and energy costs can be more volatile and the market knows more about what's going on with food and energy prices. We just have to look at the oil futures to know how much energy has gone up that month, right? So this often means that the core inflation number brings more new information to the market. Core inflation ends up being more predictive of inflation in the long run, so pay extra attention to it. There's also the lesser known Personal Consumption Expenses Price Index, or CORE PCE. This report doesn't move markets as much as the CPI does, but it's actually the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation measure, so pay attention to it. Now, if you want to know more about these reports, the best source of information out there is the reports themselves. Go read last month's release and visit the government websites for the supplemental information on how the reports are created. Forex Factory has a great calendar where you can look up the history of past releases and find links to the actual reports so that you can do this reading. Going through and making sure you understand the basics of Every report on that Forex factory list is probably the single best thing a beginning trader can do to educate themselves. Seriously, guys, forget all of the chart patterns read the economic reports. Now, in terms of getting this information live for trading, TweetDeck is a great place to look, but if you're really serious, I would highly recommend getting a news squawk. Seriously, I don't know how people trade without a news squawk. Now, I use Financial Juice, which is very affordable for a news squawk at $100 a month, and I have an affiliate link in the video description below. Also, while you're down there, check out the $100 off coupon I have for Jigsaw, which is the trading software I use. I only put things down there in the video description that I know will help you guys, so make sure you check it out. Next, I would pay attention to key analysts and journalists in the industry, which really means you should be following the Wall Street Journal's Nick Timmeros, aka 
the Fed Whisperer. This guy often has the big inside scoop on the Fed's current thinking and his stories move markets regularly. Some of the biggest moves this year came off of Nick's reports. Uh, so yeah, I kind of regret getting a Bloomberg digital subscription instead of a Wall Street Journal one. Anyways, I would also pay attention to the analysts from Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. These two banks in particular really set the tone for the rest of the industry and are widely followed by the hedge funds. So even though many analysts are often wrong, their opinion is still important to understanding the current market. But of course, this is all just a run up to the main event when the FOMC meets. This meeting takes place on a Tuesday and Wednesday. After the meeting, they release the new federal funds rate and a brief statement at 2 p.m. Eastern time. The statement will make note of the current economic conditions and announce their policy decisions. Now, the Federal Reserve does its best to avoid surprising the markets, and much of what comes out in this release is already priced in. Despite that, this event is still incredibly volatile. Liquidity is light and every trader is watching with their finger on the trigger button. So it's probably best for retail traders to avoid trading immediately before or after the event. It's not uncommon to see large impulsive moves in both directions based on seemingly insignificant pieces of information. Like really, the market can latch on to something as simple as adding or removing a single word from the statement. But if I do take a trade, I'm usually going to wait for a few minutes after the release. The news squawks will usually tweet an image with a comparison of what was added and removed from the last meeting statement. I find that incredibly useful for parsing out the statement quickly. I'm going to look for any signs of changes in the Fed's economic outlook and information about the Fed's open market operations, which is often released separately. And if I do see something that gives me a trade, I'm not typically looking to hold it for very long because after that, there's the press conference. The press conference happens 30 minutes after the FOMC statement release and tends to go on for about an hour. The Federal Reserve President will read a more detailed statement about the current economic conditions and that's followed by a Q&A session with the media. Just about anything can happen during that press conference and that can make it incredibly difficult to trade. Like seriously, I've learned my lesson on that one way too many times. And that's kind of the ironic thing. Everyone wants to trade on the actual FOMC day, but it doesn't necessarily have the best opportunities. The action tends to have large pullbacks and the market often just gets it wrong. Take for instance the day that the Federal Reserve announced QE2 back in 2010. Equity markets actually closed red that day. Can you believe that? Possibly one of the best times ever to go long equity markets and they sold it. Some of the best opportunities for trades related to the Federal Reserve happen between meetings. So don't get pulled into over trading or taking large losses on FOMC day. Be picky and wait for the right conditions. If you do things right, you can catch awesome scalps during the volatility. Just don't get too greedy because things change quickly. Catch a quick profit and then get out of there. And of course, remember that this channel has everything that you need to practice. I stream the Federal Reserve meetings in addition to my morning live stream and those are all saved on the channel. So you can watch past meetings for practice and then you can join us live for the next meeting. Trading with us as a group can be one of the best ways to get started when you're new. And if you're looking for the next video to watch, why don't you check out my trading the news video because that's all very relevant to what we discuss here today. So I will see you guys on the next live stream. And in the meantime, stay profitable friends, or at least don't blow it all. Okay.